At the dawn of a new century, the Grand Am Rolex Sports Car Series rose with the sun. An ambitious concept being showcased for the first time on one of motorsport's biggest stages, Daytona International Speedway, January 2000. The Rolex 24 at Daytona. Twice around the clock and 723 laps that year around a 3.56 mile road course. A new era and appropriately a historical marker as a production based battle for the victory ensued in the closing stages won by a Dodge Viper. At the 2001 Rolex 24 there were more memories, some that are now bittersweet. Some people called that event the 24 hours of Earnhardt with Dale Sr. and Dale Jr. co-driving a Corvette to a fantastic fourth place finish overall. We especially cherish this memory. Two weeks later, at the same track, Dale Sr. would race for the final time. 2003 ushered in a new class, the Daytona prototypes, and the racing was on. A year later, Chip Ganassi racing with Felix Sabatis rolled into sports car country and quickly staked a claim to immediate and future greatness. A past sports car great, Scott Pruitt, returned to the fold and helped deliver his team a first DP championship while providing a preview of things to come. From the outset, the Rolex series attracted the attention of drivers from other racing disciplines with mixed results. In 2004, Tony Stewart, three seasons removed from winning the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series title, nearly co-drove to a Rolex 24 win. Again, nearly. A late race mechanical problem gave the victory to Bell Motorsports. South of the border in 2005, where a season finale of Mexico City featured a down-to-the-wire GT Championship battle. David Murray's third place finish delivered the driver's title to his teammate, Craig Stanton. Another finale two years later in the desert at Miller Motorsports Park, the DP Championship was up for grabs. Three stars battled, Angelelli, Pruitt and Gurney. Then suddenly, the stars were misaligned. When the crashing was complete, Angelelli's car was afire, Pruitt was penalized, and Alex Gurney, heir to a legend, started establishing his own, bringing his car home and clinching his first DP crown. Montreal in 08. All we had there, mind you, was the closest finish in Grand Am history. Darren Law, get the victory, it's close though! Oh, he's out of the air! Oh, oh out of 0.064 seconds. Mark Wilkins surging from fourth to first on the final lap to nip Antonio Garcia. To commence 2009, the Rolex 24 had its closest finish in history. 0.16 seconds. Donahue edging Montoya. It was a victory lane awash in emotion, with Brumos at the pinnacle once again. In the summer of 2009, sports cars turning laps at Indianapolis Motor Speedway was no longer just a rumor. The Rolex Series visited the Brickyard for a test session. A Brickyard Grand Prix, once a dream, seemed closer to reality. Fast forward to 2012 and buckle your seatbelt. The year began with the season opening 50th anniversary running of the Rolex 24, showcasing both the new Corvette DP and Ferrari's return to the Rolex Series in the form of 458 Italias, and ultimately a Ford Bad win by Michael Shank Racing in new Riley Bodywork. July the 27th, 2012. Remember the date. But for those who were actually at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, they remember the day and all its glory, which included the finale of the first North American Endurance Championship presented by VisitFlorida.com. September the 5th, 2012. Another date to remember. Could anything top a first ever Rolex Series race at Indy? Well, yes, this could. Announcement of the Rolex Series merging with the American Le Mans Series presented by Tequila Patron, Jim France and Don Panos, sitting side by side. It gives me great pleasure to announce today officially that Grand Am Road Racing and the American Le Mans Series are merging into one sports car racing organization. It was surreal. It was glorious. Hashtag the future indeed. And finally we arrived at 2013 with the Rolex series racing alongside the anticipation of 2014 and quickly coming out of the box with Scott Pruitt winning for the fifth time, tying Hurley Hayward's all-time record and Audi awesomely capturing GT. Throughout the year, anticipation has built, perhaps peaking on a Midwestern summer's day in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, with Road America as the backdrop 
North America's sports car future was on display. And so we are gathered tonight, so mindful of all that has transpired over the course of 14 seasons, 14 years. We will forever retain our memories. We will forever honor the past of Grand Am Rolex sports car series. But we shall know that the past has set the stage for all that is yet to come.